the world has changed for a while I know life has seen its trials But we're smiling, still stand strong Bring the love to everyone seems like more cloudy days and no time yet seems to fade but we're smiling still stand strong bring the love to everyone with open hearts we still shine strong bring the love to everyone we'll bring the love to everyone we'll bring the love to everyone Let's bring the love to everyone Hi everyone, today we are going to be talking about the art of storytelling. Now storytelling is not just limited to reading books or listening to someone read a story, it covers all areas of the arts. So in music, when we listen to a song, those lyrics tell a story. In visual arts, when we do a painting or a drawing, that is our piece of work. Our story is in our art. When we do culinary and we try, let's say, a family recipe that's been passed out and passed down, well, that's someone else's story. And now you have it and you're creating that piece. Because when you do a recipe, it has a beginning, a middle, and an end, just like a story. But in a recipe, your beginning is your ingredients, the middle is how you do it, so the process, the waiting, the cooking, the mixing, and then the end, the result, is what you created. So culinary, music, art, those are all forms of storytelling. You might wonder, why do I have three eyes on my door? That's because we want you to remember that there are three eyes in storytelling. There are three principles, no matter what art form you choose, it falls into the three principal eyes. The first eye is for invite. This is the start of our journey. This is where we draw the person in to the story and get our audience engaged. So whether it's a book, a music piece, a painting, we want our audience to be intrigued. We want to capture their attention, to invite them in. We want them to want to pick up that book or we want them to pick up that sheet of music and play along. We want them to listen to that song or we want them to try out a new recipe or look at that piece of art because when you invite them, that begins your journey on whatever form of art it is. The second I is for Ignite. We want to ignite the mystery for our listener or for our viewer. We want them to be able to ask themselves when reading a book, what is the story about? Or when they're listening to a song, what is the song about? What are the lyrics telling us? What emotions or story is the artist or composer trying to say in that song or music piece? The same when we look at a painting. We want to know what is the artist trying to say? What is the artist trying to tell us? When we're looking at this piece of art, it could mean something to us. We could think, oh, that's, we could, inter we could interpret it one way, but maybe when the artist is creating it, they had a different idea in mind. So we want to know what that is. We want to know what they were thinking. So our second eye, Ignite, encompasses that who, what, where, when, why, how, which are all the key components you also need in a story. But they could also be applied to other forms of art. And the third I is for include, where we take away the lesson that led to the action. So in the end, in every form of art, whether it's storytelling from a book, music, visual arts, culinary, we take away something with us from that experience, from what we just learned. A call to action, sort of speak. Because when you read a new recipe, you learn, you're learning something new. When you read the words of a song and listen to how the musician performs it, the lyrics, the accompanying music, it all goes together to tell a story. It's all connected. When you read a book or a novel, there's a reason behind the story. It's to educate, it's for entertainment, to teach. 
When you tell a story, you're sharing the story to make people happy. You're sharing the story to share your experiences. So this third eye is all about bringing awareness to something. When an author writes a book and you've reached the end of the story, they have to bring the listeners and the readers to the lesson and the action. And that is the conclusion of their story. So these three eyes are not just limited to storytelling. It covers all areas of the arts. Some I haven't even talked about, like dance, drama, films, TV, all those things. But I just focused on certain ones today and ones that we're familiar with at SEC. So just to recap, there are three principal eyes to the art of storytelling. So remember, three eyes. So we've got invite, ignite, and include. So I want you to remember these three eyes when you think about the art form you choose. Now, on our Google Classroom, under the Literary Arts section, I have created a worksheet for this week's activity where you guys are going to tell me your favorite story, your favorite musical piece, and your favorite artist. So only three things, just like our three eyes. So I look forward to seeing your work, and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Bye. Hey everyone, how y'all doing? I hope you're all staying safe in this crazy time. I swear, it feels like it's been five years already with all this. But it's important that we stay connected like we are now, virtually. And that's why I wanted to jump on here and tell you about a video that I created, which I'm about to show you, uh, all about the structure of storytelling, the power of storytelling, which fits perfectly for this week, which is storytelling. So we're going to jump into that and I'm going to talk about the, um, the four P's. So the four P's are people, place, plot, and purpose. So we're going to learn all about that right now. So stay, stay tuned and um, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. See ya. Hey guys, my name is Joe Smith and I'm the owner of Lifelens Wedding Videography. Today we're going to talk about the power of storytelling in wedding films. So if we take a well-known high-end company like Still Motion, who used to charge ten dollars to $30,000 a wedding film, but they killed it in the wedding industry. They mastered the art of storytelling and, I don't know, they were a big mentor to me. So as a filmmaker and someone growing into that industry, uh, I know, I remember I would sit down and I would take notes on the films they were creating and the fashion trends that they were utilizing at that time, like the ring shots, the dress shots, slider shots, stuff like that. And now we got drone shots, now uh, slow mo is a big thing, so which are all important for a wedding film. But I think the question that we ask ourselves mostly is like, how do these successful wedding filmmakers get these emotions, you know, like a couple, the people involved in the weddings. Uh, stuff like that, right? Like, we ask ourselves, did they reenact the shot? Or did, did they just time the shot perfectly? You know, like, we're left questioning these things, right? Through my journey, I've come to understand that all these well-known, successful wedding filmmakers are just using this simple method. And the method is, is what we're talking about today. The power of storytelling. And where that starts is the building of a relationship with your couples. You should always make them feel like they're your only clients. This not only builds trust, but it also builds a great relationship that you want. In the long run, this will help you understand how to create a great story that is original to them, which will then lead you into the four steps of storytelling. Applying the four steps of storytelling, this method is key to discovering what makes a great story. From the characters, to their connections to the scenery, understanding what the story is about, to why it even matters. Here's a breakdown of the four steps of storytelling. People, who are your main characters in the story that will entertain the ones watching your film and who will they choose to applaud for? Place, the location where the story lives and how it reflects your characters. Plot, this keeps the audience engaged from beginning, middle to end of the character's journey by developing a strong core question to be answered throughout the film. This structure is born out of conflict which makes that the backbone of your story you're trying to tell. We will dive into plot more in a later video. Purpose, why the story you're telling matters and how it speaks to the viewers. Sometimes wedding filmmakers like to focus just on place and purpose, the obvious or expected things to tell their story. But we need to learn the structure so that we can tell the whole story. This sums up everything for this video today, but next time we will dig into more about how we can learn about our couples before the wedding day. Thanks for watching, I'm Joe Smith and I'll see you next time.
Today we're going to be reading Hidden Treasure by Santina Smith, illustrated by David Smith, colored by Paolo Rinaldi. One night, William's mom said, William, oh William, it's time for bed. Have you not heard a word I've said? It's time to put your toys away, for tomorrow will be another day. Then William said, but mom, there must be a treasure out there to find, filled with magic and toys and riddles and rhymes. But if you insist that it's time for bed, I will just have to dream of these in things instead. Then William's mom said, then close your eyes and off you go to a far off land where treasures grow. Oh my, oh my, where can I be? Is there someone out there that has a treasure for me? Excuse me, Red Tree, can you help me please? I'm looking for a treasure that I hope you can see. Oh, that's fantastic, such splendid news. But only the king can guide you with clues. For I have no treasure hidden here, you see, but only this fruit to take on your journey. Oh, thank you, Red Tree. This gift I will bring. But do you know where I can find the king? Oh, I'm afraid not. I do not know. But perhaps the orange butterfly may know where to go. Excuse me, orange butterfly. Can you help me, please? I'm looking for a treasure that may be hidden in these trees. Oh, that's fantastic. Such splendid news! But only the king can guide you with clues. For I have no treasures hidden here as you see, but only this painting to take on your journey. Oh, thank you, orange butterfly, this gift I will bring. But do you know where I can find the king? Oh, I'm afraid not. I do not know. But perhaps the yellow bumblebee will know where to go. Excuse me, Yellow Bumblebee, can you help me this hour? I'm looking for a treasure that might be hidden in a flower. Oh, oh that's fantastic. Such splendid news. But only the king can guide you with clues. For I have no treasures hidden here as you see. But only this honey to take on your journey. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Yellow Bumblebee, this gift I will bring. But do you know where I can find the king? Oh, I'm afraid not. I do not know. But perhaps the green turtle will know where to go. Excuse me, green turtle, can you give me a hand? I'm looking for a treasure that might be buried in the sand. Oh, that's fantastic. Such splendid news. But only the king can guide you with clues. For I have no treasures hidden here as you see. But only this red rose you can take on your journey. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Green Turtle. This is a gift I will bring. But do you know where I can find the king? Oh, I'm afraid not. I do not know. But perhaps the blue parrot will know where to go. Excuse me, Blue Parrot, can you teach me to fly? I'm looking for a treasure that might be hidden in the sky. That's fantastic! Such splendid news! But only the king can guide you with clothes! For I have no treasures hidden here, as you see, but only this mirror to take on your journey. What? Oh, thank you, Blue Parrot. This gift I will bring, but do you know where I can find the king? I'm afraid not. I do not know. But perhaps the purple elephant will know where to go. What?
Excuse me, purple elephant, can you give me a ride? I'm looking for a treasure that might be far and wide. Oh, that's fantastic. Such splendid news. But only the king can guide you with clues. For I have no treasures hidden here, you see. But only this book to take on your journey. But before you go, there's one last thing that I will tell you to help you find the king. There are many roads you can choose to go. Just trust yourself and you will know. Mr. King, how do you do? It's been a, such a long journey just to find you. There were so many friends along the way that lead me to you and the treasure today. Oh, William, oh, William. Yes, I can clearly see that you have been on quite an amazing journey. So here you are. You have found me at last. Open the treasure chest and do it fast. Ah, now tell me, William, what do you see? Will all these things really make you happy? For these are treasures that come and go, and you may have them as long as you know that whatever you go and whatever you do, the real treasure lies right deep within you. Just like all your friends along the way, their gifts are here with you to stay. That is where your treasure lies. Each gift has a meaning. Let me tell you why. The tree was first a seed, and so it took root. It knew who it was, and it bared its fruit. So must you too be like that seed. Be rooted in who you are, and you'll have everything you need. Just like the butterfly, beautiful to see. Colors of the world with all its creativity. So must you too try to create. There is something inside of you the world cannot wait. Maybe a dance, or a painting or two. Whatever inspires you, that's all up to you. There is no harder work than that of a bee. He knows he must work for all his fill of honey. So know that in life, nothing comes for free. But if you work at what you want, your reward will be sweet as can be. The turtle spreads love by giving the rose. That one act of love makes all our hearts grow. So do everything with love and give with your heart. And wherever you go, you will have a good start. The parrot speaks the truth and is like a mirror on the wall, reflecting our words no matter how small. So don't tell a lie, parrots repeat what you say as a constant reminder that the truth is always the best way. Although the elephant is grand in size, his true strength comes from being very wise. So read a book and feed your mind, and all the answers you will find. Oh, thank you, oh, thank you, for now I can see that the real treasures lie deep within me. Ah, oh, this time has been fun, but this journey must end, so follow the rainbow to return home again. Take what you've learned and come visit again, for what good is a treasure if you can't share it with friends? The end. Hi guys, how's it going? So, have you ever heard of the phrase, a picture is worth a thousand words? Well, what that means is that an image can mean a lot of different things. And sometimes that same image can also tell a story without even using words. So this week, our theme is storytelling, and in the art world, storytelling has been around just as long as humans have been. Take caveman paintings, for example. The first ever caveman painting ever discovered is about 44,000 years old, and these paintings portrayed a lot of prehistoric animals like woolly mammoths and bison, and they also portrayed people too. These pictures help to tell a story of what it was like to live that long ago. Another example of great storytelling through art were the ancient Egyptians. 
They use symbols like hieroglyphics and pictures to record historical events and tell really amazing stories. Just like these examples, we can create stories just by using symbols and pictures. So let's create some art. This week, we're going to create something special for Father's Day. Let's start. Alright guys, now that we've learned a little bit more about the ancient cultures and how they use symbols to tell stories like the cavemen and like the ancient Egyptians, uh, we're going to create our own. And since it's almost Father's Day, I thought it would be a really cool idea to create a picture or a story using symbols about your dad. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to need some form of plastic styrofoam plate, something that you can use put water on or draw on, um, coffee, markers, a cup of water with a paintbrush, an ink pen. It doesn't exactly, like if you, if you don't have an ink pen, that's fine. Um, but make sure it's not something that's going to run, it's something more permanent, all right? And some thick paper. So, let's talk about our dads. What are some things, if you think about your dad, some symbols or pictures that you can come up that represents your dad? So, we don't necessarily have to follow a story like beginning, middle, and end sequence, but um, you can choose different symbols that represent just who your dad is and the story of who your dad is. All right, so let's do a little bit of brainstorming about our dads. What are some symbols or pictures that you think of when you think of your dad? Or if it's not your dad, a male role model in your life, or someone that you really look up to, like a grandfather or another family member or a friend, what are some symbols or pictures that remind you of them? Um, so these are three things that represent my dad. So when I look at this, and I know when he looks at it too, he's going to know that this represents him. Awesome. So here's where you can kind of switch it around a little bit you have some options not just the drawings those are just practice drawings so this is not what the actual picture is gonna look like at the end what we're gonna do is we're going to create we want to make this picture look more on the rough side like I said we're kind of inspired here by the hieroglyphics on the ancient Egyptian pyramids and walls or the cavemen drawings that were not necessarily like proportionate or they weren't they weren't like very detailed they were just a little bit more rough because they were drawing on like the walls or the rocks and stuff like that so to represent that kind of roughness and ruggedness we're going to use you know one of two choices you can choose to do coffee or you can choose to use some markers because we're gonna do a little bit of a watercolor example all right so I took out a little bit of scrap paper a little bit of my more thicker scrap paper we'll start off with the coffee if you want your painting to look more kind of rough like imitating the caveman drawing a little bit of water we're gonna add it to the coffee And we're gonna mix that in a little bit and we're gonna use this kind of like as a background just the background color because we're not focusing too much like I said about details or anything but more just kind of a back background splash splash background I don't know what to call it. and you're just gonna take that and place it in the roughly the shape of whatever it is that you're going to be drawing. So I'm going to draw the baseball. And I'm just going to make a little circle and I'm not going to make it too neat. I don't really mind if it's a little bit messy or if it's a little bit outward. And oh, I forgot to mention, but you're going to need some paper towel. All right. So we're going to just pat that dry because we don't need it to be. We don't need it to be that that wet we just want it to be or that deep color so we're gonna leave that and maybe the treble clef I'm 
gonna do a little bit of blue because my dad loves the color blue. It's his favorite color. And he also likes a little bit of green in there. So I'm gonna use a mixture of these two. I take my paintbrush. I'm going to do the same thing over here. So I'm just giving you guys these two different options. But you guys can choose one or the other, or you can do the coffee and the markers. But like I said, make it messy. It's not supposed to be too neat. And then I'm going to take my... my paper towel and I'm going to dry it up. Alright, so now that we have these two kind of interesting blobs of color, we're going to draw on top of them. So this one's pretty dry, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a circle. And I'm going to be very rough about it. Because like I said, we're, quite, we're kind of imitating a little bit or we're kind of inspired by these really rough not very detailed more symbolic symbols that we've seen in ancient cultures Let me go give it a little bit of shading and same with the treble clef I'm going to go over it many times. The more times, the better. And as you can see, the more we go over it, the more rough it looks. But then we have these little symbols with a splash of color. And I kind of did it before with the coffee on this side and the baseball on that side, but either one works. So for me, the coffee looks really cool because it just looks like you're kind of imitating those rocky textures that the cavemen people use. But you can also use color because the Egyptians had color, a lot of ancient cultures had color. Um, but yeah, I again, I use blue just because it's my dad's favorite color. And so now that we've kind of practiced a little bit, I'm going to put those to the side and I'm going to take out a template. So I put this template on Google Classroom and it's basically just three spaces where you can draw three different symbols and a cute little happy Father's Day message on the bottom so your dad knows that it's, you know, something that's about him. So for this one, let's do some coffee. So I'm going to grab some of that coffee and I'm going to, I'll do the baseball and I'm going to try to fit it in this whole area. I'll do roughly, it doesn't even matter if the coffee is in the right place or not, it's more about just giving your little sketches some it's more about giving your sketches just some pop of color and I'm going to take my I'm going to take my paper towel and take out the excess it smells very coffee very much like coffee in here right And I'm gonna go ahead and start drawing my symbols. So again, you, you guys can choose whatever symbols have to do with your dad. I chose these symbols because they remind me of my dad, but if your dad likes fishing, you can draw a fish, or just a really quick symbol of a fish. If your dad likes skiing or canoeing or anything or if there's like a particular memory of, of your dad like that you really love you can do that too and once you finish filling in 
your different symbols, you can go an extra step. You can frame it. For this one, I decided that I would use the color instead of the coffee. And you can frame it and give it to him as a gift and let him know that those are some symbols that represent him and tells a little bit of his story. Alright guys, so when you finish, send me a picture, um, submit it to Google Classroom, I'd love to see what you guys were able to do and I'd like to see the stories of your dads or the symbols of how your dad, um, or what represents your dad, and have fun with it, like always. Alright, okay, I'll see you next week. Hi guys, so today I'm going to be showing you my favorite art form that I like to use to tell a story, which is scrapbooking. So scrapbooking is where you take pictures or things that are special to you, like your work or certificates or anything, and you put them in a book that tells your story. So it could be from a baby book to a vacation book to just a book filled with memories of family and friends. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that and how you can make your own at home. Not every scrapbook is the same. You can have a scrapbook that's big like this one where your pages are really big and you can fill them with, you know, pictures and memories and that kind of thing. So they can be like this. You can have a you can make a scrapbook out of just a notebook. It's just a spiralized notebook. All you need is just some pages and you can put in your pictures and your all, anything you want inside of a notebook. Or if you don't have a notebook at home, you could even take some lined paper or white paper and staple it together and create your own book. Now I'm going to show you guys some of the tools that I use that are key for scrapbooking. So this right here is called a paper cutter. So it's kind of like scissors, but it's different because you use it flat on a table. So what you do is, so I'm going to go into my uh, stack of paper right here, and I'm going to pull out a piece of paper. So we'll take this one. And what you do is you open it up, so it has a little cutter, so you slide it to the end and you open it up just like this and you place your sheet of paper inside and we're going to cut our paper right in half. So we're going to snap it shut and we're gonna cut our paper just like a strip of it. We're going to slide it all the way down the middle and we're going to put it on the table and cut it and lift it up. And we have our piece of paper. So our strip of paper has now been cut. So when we use this this tool, it creates a very straight line. So if we weren't going freehand with just a pair of regular scissors, this gives us a nice sharp line on our piece of paper. So in scrapbooking, you can also use scissors and you can use fancy scissors. So I have this pair right here that says wave. So what this looks like is when you cut the paper, and I'm gonna show you guys, you hold the paper like this and you're gonna cut and it creates a wavy line on your paper. So you can do that for borders, you can do that for trims, you can do that however you'd like on your paper. Now, I'm gonna show you guys my favorite tool of all, and it's this little guy right here. This is called a corner cutter. So how this works is you take any piece of paper that has a sharp edge, like a corner, a sharp corner, and when you put it inside this little thingy, it will give it a rounded edge. So let me show you. We're gonna take our paper and we're gonna put it in so the corner matches. We're gonna cut it and there, we have a nice rounded corner. So this is a great tool to use on paper and pictures. I use this all the time, it's very handy. Now that we have our piece of scrapbook paper, we want to put our pictures on it. Now you could use a glue stick if you have a glue stick at home. I wouldn't recommend you using just regular liquid glue or hot glue because when you glue your picture or your work on top of it, it's going to show through and it's going to be really bumpy and it'll also ruin your pieces of work so you can't take it off after. It'll kind of ruin the picture. So something that I like to use are called tape squares. So they come in a little box like this and, all you, and they're, they're double sided tape. So you just pull them on the end and they come off like this. So you, you peel off the little tab and then you're left with this. I'm gonna put on our piece of paper like this and I'm gonna lift it off and there, the white square is now on our sheet. I'm gonna take a picture and I have one from Halloween at SEC and we're gonna put it on and there, 
our picture is now stuck on our paper. Now you would do all four corners, and that way if you want to take your picture off, it just comes off and it won't wreck your picture. So you could put it in a frame or use it again after for something else. Now once you've taped down all your pictures and all the things you want in your scrapbook, now comes the fun part, my favorite part, which is the decorating. So you can take anything and decorate your scrapbook. You could take markers and draw, but what I like to use are stickers. I love stickers, any kind of stickers. So here I have some letter stickers if I want to spell something out. I've got some fun little jewels and gems that I can peel off and they come off in like long rows and I can put them onto my paper. I've got fun pattern tape. So I've got tape with flowers on it, I've got polka dots, I've got another flower one, which makes a really nice border on your paper. So if you want to take a piece of tape and either put it on your paper or border a picture, that makes a really nice touch. I've got travel stickers for doing a travel scrapbook. I've got all kinds of little cutouts and borders. So little different pieces of paper that have little frames on them. I've got different shapes. I've got squares, I've got longer shapes where you can put little messages on or you can put stickers on them, all different kinds of things. So that's where the fun is, is decorating your scrapbook. Once you've used all your tools and essentials, you can take your stickers and your decorating and have fun. So now that we've talked about a scrapbook and how a scrapbook is a story about us, it's either telling a story through pictures, whether it's you know a vacation or your baby book or uh, memories with friends and family, or if you have work that you've done and you want to put it in your scrapbook, you can do that too. Or let's say a sports certificate or a little swim badge or sports badge. Whatever it is, it's little things that are special to you and you put them in a scrapbook for keepsake. So I thought it would be fun if we did a scrapbook together. So I have an activity for you guys to do while you're at home to create your own scrapbook. Now this worksheet it says, it says my 2020 COVID-19 time capsule, but we're going to call it a scrapbook because you can take these pages and you can tape them or glue them inside a scrapbook or a notebook or just create your book. Like I said, with some lined paper, or blank paper, put some staples in it and you can put these pages inside. We also invite you to put the work that you've done in all our other previous videos inside your scrapbook. So you can keep that and remember the time that you did SEC videos online. So I'm gonna show you a few pages from here and the rest can be found on our Google Classroom under SEC activities. So we have a cover page. Now, the first page says, you're living through history right now. Take a moment to fill in these pages for your future self to look back on. And here are some other ideas of things to include. So some photos from this time, a journal of your days, any artwork you created, family, pet pictures, special memories, and lo uh, local newspaper pages or clippings. So you can take this page and you could even go beyond this page if you'd like. And you can put pictures, you can put family members, you can put pictures of pets, you can, if you've journaled your days at home, include that. So this is a great way to start your scrapbook. The next page is an all about me page. So it says my favorites, my favorite color, animal, food, show, movie, book, activity, place, song. Maybe there's some new shows you've discovered during this time at home and you wanna document it. So when you look back, you're, you can remember, oh, I watched this show when I was home. So here's the all about me page. Now this one says, how am I feeling? So it says words to describe how I feel, how my face looks, you can circle the emotions, what I'm most thankful for, what I've learned most from this experience, and three things I'm most excited to do when this is over. I think that would be a fun one for you guys to fill in, so I can't wait to see what you come up with. Now I think this is my favorite page. It says, you are not stuck at home, you are safe at home. What am I doing to keep busy? So you can write in the little lines or you could even glue pictures if you've taken pictures of things you've done. If you've, if you've gone for a walk with your dog or you've baked something around the house and you've taken a picture of it. The pictures that you share with us on our Google Classroom, you can put them on here, you can put them on the scrapbook that you create. This is a great way that you can share with us what you guys have been doing at home. And the last page I'll share with you guys says special occasions. What occasions did you celebrate during this time? 
So maybe you celebrated a birthday at home, or maybe you celebrated a graduation, or maybe you celebrated, I don't know, a holiday. So you can write that in here, what event it was, what when it was, and how you celebrated it. So that's just a fun way to track the events that have been going on in your home as well. Now this, page, this booklet goes beyond just that page, but those are just some of the pages I wanted to share with you guys, maybe encourage you guys to do those ones. You don't have to do them all, but those ones are kind of my favorites and I think you guys will really like them. So I can't wait to see your scrapbooks that you guys create and I hope you guys will take pictures and share with us in our Google Classroom. Scrapbooking is a really fun and relaxing art form, I find. I put on some music and it's just, it's just a nice way of you know, expressing yourself and telling a story at the same time. So I hope you guys enjoy, have fun, and see you soon. Bye. Hi everyone! Today for this week we're gonna make a Brazilian barbecue. And for a Brazilian barbecue we have to have a picanha. Okay, picanha it's called cap steak over here. And in Brazil it's the most price cut of the meat. Okay, for the picanha now we're gonna have we're gonna criss cut the fat because then um, the the fat become more crisp but don't touch the the meat in the body just the fat in the top okay and then we're gonna get your salt the thick one I show you before the coarse salt, this one here, and you put in the picanha and press. See? Like this, then you turn, you put some on this side too, and the salt you put it like a lot. I cannot tell you how much to put it because I don't know how big is that your picanha is gonna be too. And remember, the picanha, the cup steak, more small as it is, it's better. More tender is the, the meats. Okay. This is good. I'm gonna wrap the picanha and then foil paper, aluminum paper. And we're gonna put it on the barbecue. And to start, we're gonna wrap. And then the fat, when you put in the barbecue, it has to be up. And then after, when you, when you remove the aluminum paper, the fat go down. Okay? And this is gonna take at least two hours to be ready. Put another aluminum paper to make sure the meat is good. Okay, that's good. And the fat is here. We use a charcoal barbecue. Okay, here is the picanha. The fat is on the top. And it's gonna stay there for a while. Okay, between that now we're gonna put the chicken wings, the sausage, and the caps to start cooking. Okay, guys, now we're gonna make, uh, it's in Brazil we call caft. Over here we're gonna call ground beef and the steak. First, we're gonna need, I'm gonna use half a kilo of ground beef. The steak we put in the water for maybe half an hour. Then we have parsley, salt, and we're gonna use this, it's an onion. Uh, we're gonna use maybe two package. Now we're gonna put some salt. Don't put too much because on this package they already have salt. They have salt, onion, everything you need it. And that's why it's simple to do it. And this. A little bit. Let's get the right hands. This. Like this, that's enough. And just mix. Some 
people they do to the chicken chicken hearts on the barbecue to, I, I never made it because I don't like it but to make the chicken heart you just have to clean the chicken heart first then you put some parsley um, salt and olive oil leave and put the chicken hearts there in the and on this season and leave there for like 20 minutes half an hour and then after you put the chicken hearts and the the stick you put in the barbecue some people they love it okay see when you see it's all get together it's good i took the water and then now you're gonna grab just a little bit like this and you put it here you cannot make true thick and no true thin like because if you make too thin then it's gonna be it's gonna be so dry after the meat so like it's bad a little bit like this see and you put it See, you just put in the container for after we bring it outside. Okay, it's done. I got 30. Put in the fridge until we bring outside for the barbecue, okay? Now we're gonna make our chicken wings. In Brazil, we call those tulipas or asinha de frango. It's the small ones. And we're gonna need lemon, salt, mustard, our tablespoon measurements, and our cups. Okay, that's our tools for the chicken. The salt, everybody put how much they like. Put the food. Okay. Then the lemon juice. And over here I'm using like 500 grams uh, chicken wings, okay? We can put like one cup of lemon juice. See? It's good. And and those you cannot dress like a day before. Because now the chicken is gonna be change of color. Like you dress a little bit before you're gonna make the barbecue. inside one container with the lid bring to the fridge until we bring outside okay I forgot to tell you guys too we need garlic power it has to be the power one okay and then go by how you guys like it if you guys like you guys can put less lemon juice and they make more dry and a little bit of more mustard just gonna put a little bit more but maybe just put half a cup of lemon juice and maybe two tablespoons of mustard. It's by you guys like, you know? Okay, then we get this. Put in another container. See? And cover and goes to the fridge. And should we bring all outside? Okay, now we're gonna make in Brazil, we call vinaigrettes. Over here, maybe we can call vinaigrette dressing. I'm not sure the translate from English, but we're gonna need tomatoes, onion, 
apple vinegar, salt, parsley, and I'm gonna use my two, this one to chop. I'm gonna chop here the tomatoes and the onions. Actually, Camila's gonna chop. Okay? Let me. Sh okay. Okay, now to start, we're gonna cut the onions in like uh, maybe two inch or an inch. Like circle like this. It's easier to chop. If you don't have the chopper, you can do it. It has to be small pieces. Okay, this is the onion. And this tomatoes, we're gonna cut in like in the half. And just take the green part out. This usually we eat with our, our picanha, and over here we call cap steak. Or you can put in the with the bread, make like a nice sandwich with the, put sausage or meat and the vinegar vinaigrette together. Or sometimes we eat with the rice on your barbecue. and bring to the fridge to get a little bit of cold, okay? That's it. Okay, uh, about Brazilian barbecue, it's like we never make burger or hot dog in the barbecue. And our barbecue usually lasts the whole day okay, because in Brazil it's like as soon as the meat finish cook we eat that's like uh, we don't wait for everything to be done to sit on the table and eat we just eat as long as we go and that's it now we put everything over here in the barbecue Belly in Brazil, it's pancetta. Over here, and this is I slice the picanha, the cup steak, to cook faster. And then you put a salt. Cactus that we have to turn, in other words, they're gonna burn if they cook really fast. Okay, it's almost good. Now we put the chicken wings here, make sure this doesn't touch the meat. True, okay. Now we're gonna put the chicken wings, but we don't put all, we put a little bit as soon as this one's coming out, then we put more. Okay. Okay, look, when they're like this, they're ready. Then you just take it out. 
and people start eating. And then we pull more. Okay, Camila, let's show the garlic bread. Okay, the pork belly wins like this. We just flip. And put more salt. And let it cook. And Camila eating the kaft. They're good, me? Hot. They're hot. <laughs> It's like this, we just put it on the table and people I'm eating. Okay. The cup steak, I just turn now and put more salt. And that's it. The cup steak is done. Is that gonna be like this to take the salt out? And the same with the belly part. Like this. Put it here. And then we put a new one here. Put salt. And then, and then you get it. And you're gonna cut it like small pieces. This and that's it. And so put it on the table and that's it. People start eating. Okay, this is a farofa. We use it with that with the picanha. Rafael, I'll show them how we eat the picanha with the farofa. How it is, half? Good. Okay, the sausage we do like this. The vinaigrette, usually we put on the bread. And then you put some meat, some sausage or meats. And eat. See? This is Ricardo's. And that it's Camila putting her sausage in the bread. Okay, the pecan is still here. But we're already eating. Now the first then this one is done too. So like this. And we take it out. Let's take out some sausage to this one's done. Chicken wings too, we already took some out. This one's almost done. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna unwrap the pinya. Cap steak. Okay, the pika is here like for an hour and a half. Now we grab this, this, here. And we put the pika here. <laughs> Okay, now this is the fat. We have now we have to put the fat upside down. Okay, and let it go. After you take the paper and put the fat in the bottom, you put more salt on the top. Okay. 
chicken and the tomatoes. Okay, when the chicken is ready, we're gonna we start cutting like in the ends. And depends who like more cooked, you leave a little bit longer. If you like like this, it's good. And that's it. Okay. Let's cut one more. You don't like like when you cut this little bit but just put a little bit more in the like this okay this is our brazilian barbecue if you guys try to make a home do send us to the google classroom okay bye hey guys so i hope everybody's doing good this week um so our theme this episode is storytelling um and I thought uh, we can take this chance uh, to talk a little bit about storytelling in the context of uh, music and, and how that works and, and kind of writing your story when you're writing a song. So um, music is storytelling and it is a form of storytelling and um, you know it, it's there's different ways to tell your story in music. But we're, the way we're going to talk about is uh, is how we told our story in in our theme song. So our theme song was written for these episodes, and that song tells a story as well. And I want to talk a little bit about that story, which in essence is our story. Um, so before we jump into that, um, in a, in music, there's different parts to a song. Um, Normally, you have verses, chorus, and bridge, uh, bridges. But with the song we're looking at today, it, it, again, it's a theme song, so it's a little bit shorter. So the, the parts we're gonna look at today is the, the verse, the chorus, and then there was another verse and another chorus, all right? So I wanna talk a little bit about what verses and choruses are in, 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 the, in the context of storytelling. So, in music, um, a chorus, especially a song, a chorus represents your main message in your story. All right, so it's the main thing you want to tell the audience who's listening. You want to say this, right? And the verses, what they do is they kind of accompany the choruses. So they they kind of they're they're kind of the road to get to your main message. That's what a verse does. So when you have a verse, it's kind of like the journey getting you to your main story or your main message, which is the chorus. And, um, and every song is, is kind of placed that way and, and that's the structure. Um, sometimes it's a little bit different, but for most songs, that's what you get. You get verses that kind of uh, build up the story and then you get this main kind of, this is my message and this is what I wanna share. So we're gonna look at our song uh, today, and, uh, which is oh, Bring the Love to Everyone. Um, and again, it's our theme song. So every time you start an SCC episode and you hear that song, this is the song I'm talking about, which is bringing the love to everyone. All right. So the first verse, so the first path uh, we take in this song is, I know the world has changed for a while. I know life has seen its trials. So what does that mean? So um, when we were writing this song, we knew we were doing these episodes because of COVID. We, you know, everybody was stuck at home and we knew that, and, but we still wanted to be able to, to, um, to, to let SEC do our teachings and, 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 you know, be in contact with you guys and let you guys know we're still there. So what this says is, you know, SEC, we know that the world has changed. We know everybody's stuck at home and we know that, um, uh, that this isn't going to last forever. Everybody knows that. But for now, this is the way... It is, right? This is how it's going to be. And, you know, then the words go, I know life has seen its trials. So in that context, what trials means is like hardship. So I know life is being kind of hard right now. And I know having to stay at home is going to be really hard, right? So the world's changed and it's going to be hard for a little bit. 
But then, so that's our journey. So that's the first verse. That's our, our road. Then it goes to the chorus. The chorus says, but we'll, sh uh, but we'll smile and still stand strong. We'll bring the love to everyone. All right? So what that means is, so you have your first verse. I know we're going to go through all these, and I know it's going to be hard. But SEC, so that means me and, and the staff at SEC and you watching and your family and anybody who's going to be part of our family at SEC, you know, we're going to smile and we're going to stand strong during this. And we're, we're going to bring the love to everyone. We're going to still share our gifts. We're still going to shine for everyone. That's what SEC is about is bringing our gifts to everyone and being able to, to do that, right? And I know it's different that we're not together at SEC, but... Even this, being able to do this, these videos and, and, and you guys responding through Google, um, through uh, Google Docs and, and, and even sometimes when we do the Zoom videos, you know, that's us coming together, smiling and standing strong as, as you know, the SEC family, right? So that's our message. That's our main view on, on this, on, in this song, in our story, is that, you know, even through all this hard stuff, we're going to be strong as, as an SEC family, so... All right, so that's the first course. That's the first verse, first course, and then we're gonna get to the second verse, which is, I know it seems like more cloudy days, and I know time seems to fade. So again, we're saying we understand what's going on, and we understand that you know that there's there's gonna be tough days sometimes, you know, and and sometimes because you know all of our schedules have changed, and and again we were kind of thrown into this unexpected. Um, you know, without, we don't have exactly the same schedule, you know, our time starts to fade and each day might seem like the other day or, you know, the tomorrow, right? So, you know, we know this is going to happen. We know it's going to be hard for a little while, but then we go to the second chorus, but we'll smile and still st stand strong, bring the love to everyone. All right. So again, we're going to we know these things are going to happen, but we're going to bring the love to everyone. We're still going to stand strong together. And then the last part of the chorus goes with open hearts. We'll still shine strong, bring the love to everyone. So again, we're going to shine strong because that's our motto. Everybody shines like a star. And that's what we do at SEC. And we try to share our gifts and we try to bring that uh, sense of SEC community to the rest of the world. And even through these hard times, you know, we're still going to shine and be strong together. And we're going to bring the love to everyone. All right. And that's why the song is called Bring the Love to Everyone. So what I want you guys to do this week is I want you to, I'm going to post uh, the lyrics on Google Docs. And I, got, I want you to read through them. And I want you to kind of, even if you can learn them, that would be great too. And then, um, and then next week when you hear the song in the intro, or even if you want to go back on this video and you hear the song, uh, yeah, you could sing along to it. And now you have a better understanding what the song is about. So if we kind of sum it all together, the song is really about, you know, even though things are different and even though we're not as at SEC uh, at the location, SEC still shines because we still shine together. You know, and we're still strong together and we're still sharing together. So in the end, you know, that's what makes SEC what SEC is. It's not the location. It's not, you know, those things are great and those things are needed and they will come back. We will have our location. We'll be able to hang out with our friends and I'll get to see you guys and you guys get to see me and we'll all hang out. But, you know, that's not the only thing that make, makes SEC being strong and being able to shine and share your gifts with everybody and, and still being part of the community of SEC. You know, that's what, that's what we're about and that's what's going to get us through this. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed that and uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. Thanks. Hello SEC, it's Elizabeth here. I want to give you guys a great big thank you for handing in all your work. It really, really makes us feel that much closer to you and closer to everyone when you guys send pictures. But why not send some videos too? For example, here's a video of Marco eating his spaghetti. I take my pasta like this. The first thing I do is I gotta put my spoon over here, get the fork over here, twirl it, and then I, once it's like all rounded up, Like this, I put my mouth. And 
and that's why I eat my pasta. Awesome, Marco. We are also blown away by all the wonderful poems. We noticed that you guys have included a lot of us in all of your adventures. We really want to thank you for that. So don't forget to hand in all your work on Google Classroom, and I'll leave you with a clip of Jenna and her poem. Let's think about the musicians you would include in your life. Would you include Donnie and the Smith Brothers? Yes or no? Yeah. Eyes down again? Let's look at the video you would like to visit. How about Tetchy? Yes or no? Say yeah. How about Johanna? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now you have to choose no now or no no. Who do you want to choose? Do you want to add an extra person? Victoria? Nice answer. So I'm going to read the last parts of the paragraph and then we're going to stop the video. Now we can come to where we can all agree and conclude that I am nothing if I don't access and include all the people that are special and chosen to be a part of my circle of friends socially. And that includes everyone at S E C. Beautiful! Nice focus! Give me a high five! Wave to everyone! Say ciao! Ciao! Wishing you well! Hi everyone! Izzy here! I just wanted to thank you all for tuning into our videos. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the Sarah Elizabeth Center channel and ring the bell to get notified whenever we post something new. Thank you all for your support. See you soon!